Welcome back, everyone, to Indie 3. This is day four. It's a new hope. And today has been just running fabulously. Look at this. Okay, we are one minute over schedule, not 30 minutes over schedule. It's, it's a whole new world for us. Um, so I want to welcome you all to a, an interview that I'm really, really excited about. This is for a game that has almost no public details to it. And so uh, we are really getting a kind of inside scoop on the specifics of Arden Ripley's Date or Die, which is, uh, you can go to the screen. We'll show this uh, often, but uh, this is a oh, game. Oh, wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is in development right now. And uh, we have Arden, who's going to be coming in very soon to uh, introduce it. Uh, she is the creator of Kindness Coins, which is a visual novel um, slash uh, dating sim, kind of. I guess it's a little both, um, but very uh, satirically playing off of the uh, ideas of agency within uh, choose your own adventure kinds of games and uh, the dialogue branching options that you have and queer identities and dating and all of the things that go along with that. Uh, it's very short and it's free and you can go de uh, play it right now and I recommend it because Kindness Coins is a very funny game. Um, among so many other things, Arden... Uh, if you follow at Sproutella, uh, that's the design name that she goes by. Sproutella uh, just tweets often about uh, her very huge heart uh, for uh, dating sims and visual novels and all these things. So to see her now re reciprocating and creating her own in such big, exciting ways uh, is very uplifting. So without further ado, let me, let me introduce uh, Sproutella, Arden Ripley, everyone. Arden, you there? Yeah. Yee! Perfect. Everything works. Okay. So I just introduced you um, Woo. pretty much entirely, I think. Um, oh. Tried to fit all of your accreditations in real quick. Oh, yes. All my numerous. <laughs> um, my huge achievements. No, but you're a game designer, <laughs> and you really do a lot to represent the spirit of Indie 3 as someone who oh. is on the ground getting good work done uh, in genres that you are very passionate about. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I love uh, just making visual novels and dating sims and mm -hmm. stuff. And either they're not hard games to make. I mean, obviously it's a lot of work with, you know, all the art and the writing and stuff. Well, don't sell like yourself short. I actually, what, what parts are the hard parts to make about dating sims? Um, so, Okay, so a big like thing is a lot of um, branching. Obviously, mm -hmm. it gets like even for me can get really uh, difficult to um, keep track of all the different like branches that I want to have, um, and like how your relationships with certain characters can affect like different branches and stuff. Like I have so many flow charts like done out in all my notebooks just to try to keep everything nice and organized. Um, how do you so work is, a how do you work around breaking up these different branching paths? Are each of them like arcs or episodes? Is there some kind of meta container for your narratives? Um well for Date or Die, uh it's actually much more of a linear visual novel, which mm -hmm. uh is like great for me, uh, <laughs> because I don't have to write as much. Um but it also gives you more focus, right? Yes, it definitely like it's this I don't think this story would have worked with a large amount of branching because it's I I definitely have like a distinct story and message that I want to say with this game. Yeah. So there are there is some degree of branching like there are a few different endings, but there's it's not gonna be like uh oh, fifty endings depending on all the characters that you you know hung out with or whatever. Um. So by the really, name alone, yeah. it sounds like if you're not dating, then you've probably fallen off a branching path. <laughs> so you might um, have branches, but they seem very short punctuated yes. <laughs> um yeah well it's uh the unfortunately i mean you're you're not gonna really be the one dying so oh no then, then it would be very short uh but um you wait so i'm not at stake so who then who does that leave that's yeah. at stake uh that leaves all the other characters um <laughs> Oh, Every no. other character in the game can possibly die depending on um your actions <laughs> oh uh yeah that's amazing so... though that's really exciting <laughs> Have fun living with that guilt on your shoulders. <laughs> I, that's what I love to play video games for, is for the guilt. Uh, I that's love awesome. making people feel bad in my games. <laughs> so it's kind of it kind of goes along those 
the lines of those modern fire emblems, right? Yeah. Uh, where yes. all of your characters can die, uh, but with consequence in this case, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, there's uh, this isn't like a comic book type thing. Like once they're dead, they're gone. Um, and uh, obviously, mm -hmm. you will not be able to pursue a relationship with them any further if they are uh, dead. <laughs> you can't um, date what's already dead. You can't. It's date or die. You do not get to do both. <laughs> It's not date then die. No. It's not die it's then not, date. It's not undead. Like undate or die, I don't know. Date but, or um, undie. Yes. That's the sequel. Um <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point out Zombie that, Roman romance, everybody. I just want to point out that date or undie when uh put out in text looks like date or undie. Oh god. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> um Uh but yeah, I don't know. So it's it's definitely um I was actually wondering for a while if this game was too mean, um, because What's, when I what does too mean? <laughs> well, so when I originally started like making like you know getting all these ideas in my head and drafting stuff out, um, I originally wanted it to be because you know I've I've mentioned a lot when I've mm -hmm. been talking about this game that it's very inspired by like The Bachelor and like Flavor of Love and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, so That's even I, I have an entirely new appreciation for this. <laughs> it's it's the way I've been pitching it to people really fast. Mm -hmm. Is um it's like flavor of love meets Dank and Rompa, which is okay. You know, I yep. think that kind of like says everything. <laughs> um, but the way that I was originally organizing it was that I wanted um the player to be in the role of like the bachelor or like flavor flav, where it was like all these people were competing for your affections. Yep. Um, and thus you would be the person who did all of the elimination ceremonies, meaning that you were, like, directly responsible for um, everyone who was dying. Oh, like, wow. But so you're just, like, choosing, like, okay, who drinks from the poison goblet today? Um, yeah, basically. You. Like, that was too mean for me. Um, like, because that just goes, like, past, like, really mean and into, like, not fun and well, stressful. That's what the um, bachelor, that's what the bachelor does. Yeah. By a mission. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I, I think that also this way, like having everyone like work together um, to, you know, be angry at the main villain instead of, you know, you being angry at yourself uh, mm -hmm. kind of works better um, for the story that I wanted to tell and stuff. So OK, so you have a villain who's killing off all these people, not necessarily you. Yes, I have sent you um, some beautiful art. Of yes, him, actually. yes. Let's show some of these art pieces. Uh, the concept art is really, really fabulous looking. If you would, Thank God. You. I'm. What? Oh, I'm just proceeding. There we go. Oh, God's got okay. my back on this one. Mm -hmm. So we are showing a uh, lovely blue-haired. Uh, are those paisleys? Oh, yes. oh, the flower vest looks gorgeous. Yeah, he's um he's one of my favorite characters so far, actually. Uh, so his whole deal is um my my inspiration for him uh was actually like. <laughs> Kanji Tatsumi from Persona 4, but grown up and with a lot of like healthier attitudes towards masculinity. Uh -huh. um, so he <laughs> just sorry, I just read some of this uh, text at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I my my concept artist Julian um like took the actual like description that I wrote in his character notes and just put it at the bottom, and I swear a lot in my notes, so I had to you know can't show that in a Christian manga. Um, but uh. <laughs> Yeah, so he's fun. He um, he's really uh tough and you know like he kind of looks like a tough guy and like sort of a punk, but also um, is you know like has a lot of softer elements like his floral like shirt and vest and stuff. And uh, he writes uh like fantasy smut about elves basically <sighs> under um <laughs> under like a pseudonym like a pen name, and it's like if that's know, not like, the biggest indie like, three reveal. We just got <laughs> an entire character arc right there of of date or die. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so he's a I, I love him. He's been really fun to write. Um I still do not have uh, a name for him. I was just about to ask. What can I yeah. call this lovely gentleman? I don't know yet. Um Can I kiss him? We're... Yes, you can. Can kiss I him. hug him? You can hug him. Does he have nice smelling hair? Oh yeah. I mean look at it. Can I do him? How can that not smell nice? <laughs> What'd you say? Can I do them? <laughs> Hold yes, on. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. We're not uh, going to have H scenes. But... We've got a crash here. I'm going to have to restart the stream. Just oh. a moment. I'm very sorry. They didn't oh. get to hear me saying, can I do them? Oh, this might be for the best. <laughs> That's probably true. 
yeah, let me know when we're back. Ugh. Implied H scenes? Uh, yes, implied. Yes! That's all I need. <laughs> Just give me a couple words, my imagination will take care of the rest. <laughs> Saves you a lot of work. Yes. Uh, okay, so in the chat they're like, Solon says, can I do him? And then it crashes. Also, <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we're oh taking offline. God. Sorry, we, uh, we got a little heated there. Sorry, we... <laughs> Sorry, Hitbox. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I part of the the thing with um making this is that oh uh, will uh we've are we almost on. up? We're not live. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just double check. I'll, I'll let you know working. when we're live though. Okay, good. Or heat okay, will. God will. Zero, one. Zero, one. One, two, seven. Okay. All right. Is the recording still going well? Uh, here should be. Uh, here we go. All right. Uh, how's the recording? Is it still going well? Recording's fine. Oh, cool. Yeah. You'll get all this little it's extra. Totally bit. separate <coughs> hardware. DLC. Uh, yep. All right. So, uh, I will take us live in just a moment. So I'm gonna go mute and. Here we go, just one second. We'll let the ad roll. They'll probably have to watch an ad. Apparent, oh, welcome back, everybody. So apparently, we were uh, too hot for TV. So that implied <laughs> cliffhanger, though. Yes, yes. I know. We'll, we'll never know now. Yeah, now I can't tell you. No, now you just have to wait and buy the game. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This was all part of my marketing scheme. <laughs> you you called up Hitbox. You're like, hello, Hitbox. Um, yeah, take I it need down. To shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. Uh, I have oh. more. I have more characters. Okay. And we are. I believe looking at uh if you would god uh Claire Okay, yes. Uh so his full name um is actually a pun because I am a terrible person. Um <laughs> so he's a You are making a game a, called Date or Die, so that's a understatement. Yes. Um <laughs> <laughs> kill all my boys. Yes. So uh he is a cute boy who can talk to ghosts, so uh his name is Clairvoyance. <laughs> Oh, perfect. yeah. It wouldn't be a visual novel without name puns. I couldn't not name him that. It's a great um, name. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so yes, um, he's great. Uh, he actually started off uh as a, I was I was used to do like a bunch of like role play stuff with friends, and he was a character that I uh like role play as, uh, and then I was like, wait, I could just put him into this game because he would fit really well, um. So that's that's him. Uh he he talks to ghosts, basically. <laughs> and he has a he has a mask? He's a Yes. A little flu mask. Um because he gets sick a lot. Aww. <laughs> the uh, text yeah, on the the text on the right says, Just because I have dying mum hair doesn't mean I die end game, right? Depends on you. <laughs> right. <laughs> um so he his deal is he's lived a life that's he's very uh secluded from people um he hasn't really had a lot of interpersonal interaction outside of like his immediate family uh until uh you know he's pulled into date or die basically um so he speaks really politely uh you know he's a total sweetheart uh he kind of stutters a lot he's very nervous um as anyone sort of would be in this situation but uh he's he's very shy but he has a really good heart and he's just a very genuinely good person gotcha it's, yeah it's his deal yeah <laughs> so we're yeah, gonna I, have I, I are we gonna have arcs very... interacting with ghosts uh I am actually leaving it up to players to decide if his ghost talking stuff is uh, legit or not. Oh. Um, 
Yeah, because I, it's never, I'm never gonna go into, like, actual supernatural territory and, like, show ghosts in this game, because I just don't think that it, like, fits the it tone. It doesn't but, fit um, the themes in the tone, yeah. Yeah, uh, but he, uh, you know, that's, like, what he says, is that he's a spirit medium and, uh, like, can talk to spirits and stuff. Um, so, you know. <laughs> and so, that's a, that I, I caught a little bit, maybe I'm just kind of just understanding it, you said that he he comes on to date or die. And so um, is date well, or die just like a very transparent theme show about killing people? Oh yeah. Um, so the, the premise is that um, all these, all these different contestants uh, wake up. They don't um, remember how they got there or anything, but they wake up in this huge, like lavish mansion basically. Uh, and all the exits are barred and there's no way out. And then uh, the antagonist who's just called the host shows up and uh, he, says that they're participating in a game show called Date or Die, um, which is, you know, there's there's cameras all around, uh, like, televising everything. And um, he says that the winner of the game, like, they'll have to compete in various challenges, and the winner of the game gets to live, basically, which is a big incentive. Um, Pretty cool. So yeah, the last person, Love last that person part. standing gets to live, but also um, he promises that the winner will be introduced to their soulmate and it's oh. left ambiguous as to who that is. It's implied to be a different person for uh, each, each character, but is it just me? Do I get to be the soulmate? <laughs> <It's you. gasps> I'm sorry. I put you in this game. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm the soulmate. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of themes inside of that, or maybe even just the settings and stuff that are so uh, playful in dark and twisted ways uh it sounds like you've kind of set up bachelor saw yeah <laughs> and like the, the the thing about like especially saw and how it contextualizes itself is with games and with play uh very brutal and real play that um has a lot of messed up stuff in it but uh like it is legitimately th those themes are still there um and this also reminds me of uh, the game Sweet Fuse at your side, yeah, which is a similar game. It's a dating sim. Um, yeah, it's one. Of, it's one of my favorite. Uh, it's actually probably my favorite dating sim of all time. Mm -hmm. I, it's great. I absolutely agree, actually, um, because this is a game that you actually told me, and I, I made a huge. Uh, I made a large yeah, let's right. play that's of how it, we met. and that's how we met. Was playing Sweet Fuse, uh, which is a game that I also recommend. Um, if you've never played a dating sim before, Sweet Fuse is both hilarious, charming. Uh, uplifting and very dramatic and fun. Uh, it will ruin all other dating sims for you. It probably <laughs> will, actually. No protagonist is ever going to be as good as she is, except for maybe mine. But... <laughs> and no antagonist either. Uh, the setup for the game is that you are taken hostage with seven other cute boys, and uh, you are trapped in a theme park, a video game-based theme park, that your uncle... Uh, Who's Keiji Inafune. Keiji Inafune of Mega Man... The, uh, Mega Man fame, he created this uh, to be a video game theme park, and you are the niece of Keiji Inafune, and you are trapped with seven cute boys in theme park that if you don't solve all of the mastermind's puzzles, you all die. Yeah, he like literally blows up the theme park and yep. like will start killing hostages. It's like, and and yet in spite of that like really horribly dark premise, the game manages to be like so it's cute so and cute. sweet and like also really like intense it's so good i love that game how are are you going to manage similar type things or is, is it going to be like uh this really dark saw bachelor sounds like terrifying uh but yeah. is it going to stay like super light in spite um, of that it's definitely not gonna be as light as a game like sweet fuse Ooh, is um it's exciting it's it's yeah it's definitely uh got some darker themes um especially because a lot of the the story and stuff is dealing with um every character's like own insecurities um because they've all been pulled onto the show because they all at some point think have like a thought about themselves at some point in their life that they were not going to ever find true love or that Ooh. like they didn't deserve it um so that's why the host has like kind of preyed on these people um and like put them onto the show kind of like is dangling that like carrot on a stick in front of them of like if you win you can meet your soulmate and like mm -hmm. you'll finally fall in love and uh so it's all so it's these all characters all, all come into this place with pasts yeah yeah they've all got some baggage <laughs> oh and then that's what you're kind of discovering over time is what 
what brings yeah. yeah is there a reason for like why is it them yeah that's that's like is, a big part of it is it just because of that or is there some other identifying form or why is um, it why is it all is it all guys or is there uh, a mixed no, cast all guys i actually i i sent over uh the art of some girls uh if you want to oh there they up. are yeah um rock it out <laughs> so they uh the protagonist is is named hero um or nicknamed hero and she is i that's like when i posted about her on my blog a while ago uh she's a transgender woman and she's super fun to write uh she's definitely inspired by um saki and ifune who's the sweet protagonist of sweet fuse who's a really um, great protagonist i mean a yeah, lot of the times in these dating sims you have the protagonist that's like super uh blank face but you can you can talk more about that yeah um yeah, so Saki, I, I really like her because she's not afraid to, like, speak her mind. And, you know, she gets mad at people when they're being idiots and stuff. And I really respect that. Um, <laughs> so uh, Hiro is bitten, has really fun to write also because she has a lot of, she shares a lot of traits. Um, that's her on the left, by the way, uh, is who I'm talking about. Um, and, uh, yeah, so she's just fun to write. Uh, and then... Uh, the girl next to her, the the, the shorter girl um, with the pink hair, I I also don't have a name for her, but she's she's been fun too. Um, she's really inspired by. I did a look lot at the of... shoes and the boots. Oh yeah, the shoes are cute. <laughs> yeah, she's got cute shoes. Um, so she's fun. She's like a really you know tough girl. She's got like leather jacket with spikes on it and stuff. But she's also um really into like romance novels she actually reads uh, the boy with the blue hair she actually reads his romance novels a lot she's a diehard fan um of his stuff and you know she likes you know looking sort of feminine and girly and stuff but it's never treated as like a shameful thing for her she's just like yeah i'm tough but i also you know love looking cute so, so she's definitely inspired by like sailor jupiter uh from sailor moon was a big big inspiration for her the link that all these characters share is that they're all reading the same fan fiction. <laughs> that's that's why they're all here. That's why they're all here. You gotta get them together. Uh, <laughs> you, uh -huh. That's the sign of a true friend when you can read fan fiction together. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, God. Uh, so I have I have another picture too, and I'm wondering what is going on with mask. Oh, hold on. Let me let me see if it, if it loads. Oh, yes, that's the host. Um, that is the antagonist. Oh, so he's the host yes. and the antagonist. Well, yeah, the, he's he's like the yeah he's the main uh, you know, bad dude of the mm -hmm. game. He's the one who tells you all like what's going on and stuff, and he's uh, the driving force of you know just badness. He's a bad guy. <laughs> he's a bad dude with great yeah. shoes. Yeah, no, he looks so great. The 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 person who has done all this art, actually, the last picture was done by uh, Finn Hickey, who is um just wonderful. She Finn did the logo and stuff, which is fantastic. You can go to the uh, Date or Die Twitter account to look at it if you want. Uh, and um, wait, the the rest of the art that I've been showing is done by uh, Julian Johnson, who's doing um a lot of the character art and stuff. But um, but yeah, if you uh, uh, all the art just kind of freaked out for a second on my screen. Sorry, uh, I was flipping through a whole bunch of them trying to find the uh, date or die, the big picture that you. Wrote. Oh, I, the the logo the, is the... is uh, looks a little bit different. Um, oh, does it? Yes, but it's okay. Uh, but if you want to, I'll talk about the host some more if you want me to. Um, yes, please. I, just I saw that, to flick um, to that. I saw that Lana in the chat asked, "Can I date him?" Um, and I yes, don't that spoil is spoil the... anything. Uh, oh. but just play the game and find out. <laughs> You might be able to date him. We'll Going see. Um, it will not be a fun solution, though. <laughs> like, you should not aspire to date this man, uh, even though <laughs> he is adorable. Um, but yeah, uh, so he's great. He's very like showy and flashy. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I mean, he's a very dapper, very dapper dresser. Uh, but um, he is just pure evil basically he's he's a really horrible person because he's actively trying to sort of like whittle down the self-worth of um like all the contestants because you know he wants them to play the game basically uh and you know he's really the one who's responsible for trapping them all there so i can really tell that he's evil by his leg to torso ratio 
Exactly. I know. Isn't that like? Yep. He's oh, he's so great. I love his design so much. He's probably. I don't know if he's gonna look that cartoonish in his sprites. Um, but I kind of need him to. I don't know. He just looks so great. I I love all the art that everyone's done for this. It's so gorgeous. There's so much emotion he can put into his body when he's. Yeah. All uh, like stick thin and moving yeah, everywhere. Julian wrote uh, that the the mask like will follow his eyebrows so that he can emote really easily and have oh. like some really fun really fun cartoony expressions like that. Yeah, uh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So. And then there's this there's the uh the picture that's lightly in the background of this that has a soft face no mask. Yes. I love uh Julian wrote boy next door but also the devil. <laughs> the boy <laughs> next is, door like, is the really devil. Good, really good concept in my humble opinion but yeah that's kind of exactly what we we're going for he's supposed to look like um you know every standard uh, like conventionally attractive like tv presenter sort of oh gotcha so tv yeah. host kind of yeah, generic yeah you know, that's his job he's and he's very like yeah he's very showy and i think uh, i have even while all this like horrible horrible stuff is happening uh, which makes him really unsettling and creepy he's been like a blast to write uh so yeah <laughs> that's wonderful i'm so excited yeah. about that i have one more picture too that we haven't talked about yet but i keep flicking by it and <laughs> whatever whatever they're saying next to the the oh. torso you can't show that in a christian manga yeah so we um we have a we have a name for this character that uh is not what his actual name is um <laughs> oh. that i cannot <laughs> say on stream and it uh, is also or... very descriptive of his personality of him as a person uh so yeah i can't show that in uh. manga. um but uh his his nickname i actually do have a nickname for this guy uh he's um he's called a uh, mesmer like oh, you uh -huh. know short enough for like the word mesmerizing uh mm. so he's uh i like he's him the, he's actually the pro protagonist's uh childhood enemy um, oh which is kind of like taking his fin on a uh, childhood friends trope i guess um so yeah, they knew each other when they were kids, and they hated each other. Uh, and now, like, they haven't seen each other in years, and wow, both that lined seems up inside this game. That seems huge. That seems like a huge, uh, like what romanceable option, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's actually um, he's gonna date your childhood enemy. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a lot of like tension there. Um, They'd have a really loaded past then. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. That's got to be fun it's, to write. <laughs> yeah, it's. I really like writing um, like romantic tension like that. Um, and Mesmer is actually one of my favorite characters because um, he's he's genuinely like you know he seems like a really nice person. Yeah. Um, he's he genuinely like wants to help everyone escape and stuff. Um, and is very like come on guys let's work together um but there are some moments with him where you you might find yourself wondering if there's like something else kind of like going on beneath the surface and if he's not really telling you everything oh kind of secretive so. and reserved yeah also he has great hair <laughs> i've so noticed his hair is always <laughs> flowing in some direction or another yeah he uses a lot of gel <laughs> mm -hmm. and sweaters Yes. And sweaters. Yeah, he always looks dapper. So I have a question about, uh, I guess, your process in a way. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of tools do you use to work on your uh, graphic novel? Um, I'm using RenPy uh, mm -hmm. to make it because it's, you know, it's already available. It's out there and it's easy. It does everything that I want it to do. Um, there's there's no need for me to, like, try to go around making my own stuff. Yeah. When, Run pipes out there, and it and it's uh, you know really easy um, for me to use. Uh, so yeah, it's just RenPy. I actually write um, I actually write everything in just write in Notepad Plus, um, like and then take it over to RenPy later, and then put in whatever I need to for like you know adding images or mm -hmm. um, like sounds or backgrounds or whatever. Like I just add that in after the fact because I just want to like focus on writing um, yeah. first of all, and then. You know, it's easy if you do it in Notepad Plus because you don't have to worry about like the formatting once you shove it all over to RenPy. True. Do you have anything that helps you do that faster, or is it just like um, you copy and paste passages into RenPy? 
yeah you can just like copy and paste stuff uh and it works fine because RunPy is like I'm not I'm obviously not a programmer from the, the way that I'm about to start talking so I'm sorry but like, no I that's the, so important the the we we are all in the same boat the same the, boat the things that you use to make the things happen in RunPy uh the like the language I guess it's mm -hmm. called um words uh are it's it's really easy uh like to memorize you know you can assign like when you're writing dialogue in Notepad Plus it's it's like coming really natural to me i can just sort of like program while i write and then oh. you know later on i'll go back in once we have like finished art assets and just put those in there um but yeah it's you know making visual novels like not as hard as you might think and i don't mean that i don't mean to like you know demean like people's work or anything because like they are hard but like no no that's what that's what indie 3 is all about is, is enabling <laughs> people to create art and create yeah. stuff and um this is just more about how RenP enables people to express themselves through writing and through yeah. playing with writing. Yeah, it's fun. And uh, I know that uh, Twine has also been really helpful uh, for, mm -hmm. like, because I mentioned, you know, flowcharts and stuff. Yeah. Um, so Twine's actually, like, really helpful for, um, get, like, sort of getting into my head how I'm going to, like, segment uh, different, like, conversations and stuff. Because since every character can be killed off, like at any point uh in like the the challenges and whatnot i have to sort of write every scene like very um it starts off looking really bland uh and like sort of quiet and then you have to go in and like add variables for like well if this character is alive then they're going to this is going to happen instead and like you oh, know so twine yeah. makes keeping track of that uh very easy and it's very helpful Oh, so you use Twine as a prototype tool for the structure of your dating sim and visual novel. Yeah. For those branching paths. Yeah. Very it's smart. Something I feel like everyone should do. It's yeah, like if, if you haven't used helpful. Twine, uh, it basically is like a digital uh, pin board, one way of putting it, um, where you're kind of like putting up post-it notes on the board and, and linking to them. Um, and usually, usually by the end... You look like one of those. Uh, you look like one of those. Like a detective. Yeah, like a detective. With Thank you. That was exactly. On the map. Like, yeah. No, he was um, in New York, yeah. and now he's in Texas. <laughs> you have the string um, everywhere. Yeah, Twine's actually. Uh, I mean, you could you could even make a visual novel in Twine. Um, you absolutely, and there has been. There's some. Yeah. Haven't you made some? Um, I haven't made a visual novel because there's I haven't put graphics in. Um, there, but I. I I have made like a bunch of interactive fiction in Twine, and it's very easy. Mm -hmm. But you can also put pictures in if you want. Uh, and they also have great curation tools as well, uh, which is probably the most important part. We've had a lot of submissions from uh, that send us to Philome. Yes. Philome. La, I think is yeah. The... I love that website. And Bless you can. Those people. They're amazing, and you can just post any of your Twine uh, games to them, and they archive it for you. And so they always have a an organized place to find them. Um, they even, uh, when they first came out, grabbed all of the Twine games that were made, including, like, I'm on there, and, like, I didn't even realize that I had publicly posted some of these things, and <laughs> it was really, it was kind of fun. It was like, oh, all of these terrible things that I made in Twine are also here. <laughs> and so every, it was, it's another place where it's, like, a huge community um, uh, organization tool. Yeah, and I know that RenPy is like that too. RenPy has so many really great resources out there um, for developers. Like the the Lemisoft forums are so helpful. Um, there's a lot of really friendly people out there who are just you know will help you out whenever you you know you have a question and stuff. And there are a lot of resources. Like people will publish like free art packs or like resources or like free music for you to use in your games. Um, so that's like that's just great. There's a lot of like really good support out there uh, mm -hmm. for RunPy, which just makes it very easy to use. So. Yeah. So uh, to talk more about RenPy and process and stuff, um, you are making this game, which is a, a very big game, and uh, somewhat in a disconnected way, kind of off the heels of your previous game, Kindness Coins. Yeah. And that was made in a very different circumstance. If you want to talk about how that came yeah. about um so the yeah so last year in february uh, on valentine's day i think mm -hmm. um 
there was the pulse pounding heart stopping jam i think uh madam luna on twitter was the one who organized that i do not remember their that actual is name. that is <laughs> correct as far as i know is it's madam luna okay uh but yes yeah, so um they were you can also call the... them your highness yes <laughs> the pulse pounding heart stopping jam which was um all about like making dating sims but yep. like what you thought a dating sim meant like whatever that was and there were so many great games that came out of that jam like, yes it was the yeah and, and i mean i just my friend ryan and i were talking on steam and i was like man i can't think of any ideas for this and then ryan was like you should make a game where you play as a person that a dating sim protagonist is trying to pick up like you're playing as a love interest and i was like oh my god that's perfect so um i kind of just messaged my friend uh who's an artist and said hey you want to make a game real quick and she was like okay and we just did that in like 48 hours uh and it was the first time I'd ever like made a finished thing, really, and I kind of didn't expect it to like blow up the way that it did. It was really well put together, and if anyone hasn't uh, checked out Kindness Coins, I hope someone puts a link into the chat to that one. Yeah, uh, thank you. It was really great. Thank and, you so much. And while we're on topic, of course, to Jurassic Heart as well. Yes, uh, Jurassic Heart <laughs> was great. Like so good. It's so cute. Every yeah, time a dinosaur um... blushes, everything is great. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was just fun. Uh, it was fun to make that. I don't. Yeah, how was I it making really, it like, in such a time crunch? Uh, um, it was fine because I I was trying to scope down really hard because I know that like I had actually tried to make a bigger visual novel um a while ago and I I just got like I was my own worst enemy basically because I was like wait uh what if I added in all these things and I just kept like you know just feature creep just kicked my butt basically um wow yeah it was not fun and like yeah. the dating sim version of feature creep is like but wait what if you could kiss this person too that's what <laughs> i was thinking that's that's why i went wow i was like thinking about what feature creep means in a dating ah yeah yeah so um i was looking at, i was trying to do like 16 characters and stuff and i was like no oh my god this is bad so i had to just like scrap that and then i managed to do um kindness coins and i was like i am having this take place in two rooms and I am what? not, like, they're not leaving this, like, this one location. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's no branching. That is, just... That's actually really brilliant constraints to yeah. put on yourself. Yeah, so, I mean, it's only, like, five minutes long. But I, you know, I finished it, which is the most important thing, mm -hmm. really. Um, yeah, and so, the, the the quality of yeah. the work in itself being finished shows in such a big way. I know that oh, I've been part you. of game jams that also had that kind of feature creep uh, thing happened and the, because I didn't you know tone it down uh, in any way to get like that center core of like what's important um, that it could have been better and it looks like that kind of that's how it goes but with kindness coins it's like this is just uh, just a concise nugget of of gold yeah it's um dating sim gold thank you which is our new <laughs> our new currency oh good <laughs> I can finally buy things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it was fun. Like, I mean, a lot of a lot of kindness coins just me venting about like why are most visual novels so bad or like why are dudes so creepy sometimes? And I I was just like, wait, these concepts align perfectly. And mm -hmm. I um, you know, was just venting and having fun writing it. Like I. <laughs> Like, you know, I got to write in dialogue choices like piss your pants and cry. So it was, you know, it was great. And yeah, one of the things about it specifically was that it kind of plays with the idea of player agency within visual novels. Mm -hmm. And you don't, uh, you don't, you kind of get to choose your options, but not really. And so I was wondering what you were thinking about when you were making that, which is a, a very flash decision in a the short time of a game jam, but... Uh, I think it's really evocative. Thank you. Um, yeah, so with like a lot of like times with uh, player agency in, in visual novels, it can sort of feel like kind of creepy uh, when you're trying to like romance these fictional characters. Um, sometimes it can just feel like, you know, oh, yes, I'm just choosing these options to get closer to you and I'm like telling you things that you want to hear and then you will be mine. Like, I don't know. It's just it can sort of be kind of skeevy and i i think that the way just to solve this is honestly with like better writing um because you know short of 
basically either like a two player dating sim, which would be really cool and like should happen, um, or like essentially uh, programming like an you know an NPC like for you to romance that has like a high enough level of intelligence to like actually respond to you. And at that point, you're just kind of making AI, which I feel like is a little bit excessive. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think that better writing is you know the way to go. Like I think that uh, characters should really have like their own you know needs and wants and stuff and they might not always line up with what the player wants and like you know sometimes they might just not be interested in you like and that should be okay like i think and the player <laughs> the player also kind of has to settle and or in some way understand that the mate the protagonist is not okay in the situation and there is no circumstance in which they will be okay with the situation because mm. they're they're not you right yeah. And so yeah. it sounds like when you're talking uh that that's kind of like that better writing. Yeah. Yes, better writing is just solves a lot of problems. Better writing is letting your protagonist speak for themselves. Yeah. Um I know that part of the part of like the, the it's it's really like challenging but fun writing mm -hmm. um a protagonist who is like their own character while still trying to give players like choices and options and stuff because i don't want them to just feel like they don't have any say in what's going on at all but at the same time i want them to not be able to say things that are like wildly inconsistent with hero's character because that that just makes her a bad character and then the protagonist and then the player doesn't have any fun with that if they're you know, if their protagonist is, like, inconsistent and all over the place, that's yeah. not good for anyone. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, there's a lot of times where, uh, like, usually in some games, you might get an option to, like, say something nice to someone or to, like, be a jerk to somebody. Um, and Hero is not a jerk. Um, she's just not that kind of, like, mean person. What you might be able to do is to, like, accidentally you know pick an option that where hero says something insensitive or like thoughtless um mm -hmm. as opposed to her like actively antagonizing anybody um so like it's just how you approach uh like making choices for the players that will like feel satisfying and like meaningful while still making her a consistent character it's like it's really difficult but um it'll be worth it i i actually have a, a similar experience when I'm playing through graphic novels and dating sims, um, especially when I play them publicly as like a let's play. They're amazing to do because you get to explore all of these different characters um, and kind of role play as them in some way. Um, but when, when it comes down to the dialogue options, when it comes down to the choices, I always kind of get scared uh, because I don't know what my main character is going to say or how they're going to interpret what I think the solution is. So It'll, this will be like, oh, this is the decision that branches two very different events. And mm -hmm. if I misunderstand uh, what the, the main character is going to be saying when they say this line, uh, that's like, I don't know if that, that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a whole new story that I had no control over. But uh, it's, that's, that's kind of one of the things that I really love about Dating Sims is kind of the interpretations. Yeah. Um I know that uh, I've actually been having a little bit of trouble with um, Telltale's uh, The Wolf Among Us mm -hmm. um, because I, I really, I, I like those games. Like I, I yeah. have been having fun with The Wolf Among Us, but um, the problem that I keep running into is that um, I feel like a, a lot of the, the choices that are presented to you are not like articulated well in like the buttons that you click on. Like, so like I will think, I will see um, something and either not know what that option is means or it will i'll think it means one thing and then big b will do something completely different and i'm like no i didn't want to do that like stop and it doesn't like that doesn't feel like fair to me yeah because i'm like i'm always like no that isn't like how i wanted this to go down and it's what does not, that say about big that's not b? fun yeah <laughs> big b come on don't be rude um so i'm really trying like with date or die to to make all of the um dialogue options like very clear um in what you're going to say like to people um it's because it, you know then that way at least you can be like fully responsible for like what heroes like saying or what you like want to say um you know you might not have any idea how the other person's going to react but like you know you don't really know how that will go in real life either so 
the best I can do is like make sure that players know like absolutely what they're gonna be saying and like what the intent of like whatever they're saying is. If that makes sense. Oh, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at Hero's outfit and <laughs> the uh the unnamed character that's next to Hero. Yeah. Just so so good. Uh oh, that reminds me. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so I was just like, commenting how cute my characters are. <laughs> yeah, how does that go with uh art and getting art and like seeing your characters kind of be envisioned by other people and Oh my god. So I love my artists so much. Like they're so great. Um like uh it's just it's just really exciting and I, I have such a great um like really I'm Julian and Finn, who are the two artists, are like some of my best friends. Um, I've known them for years, and we just all click really well. Um, and I'll update things in like our character design document. I'll be like, okay, but what if we did this, guys? And they'll just be like, all right, we're on it. And then you know, sometimes I'll say something offhand to Julian, and then like six hours later, they'll be like, oh. I gave some sketches, like, I made sketches for you, and I'm like, oh, what? Like, you're ridiculous. I didn't even, like, ask you for this, but, uh, it just, it is so exciting, like, to, because, like, I'm not, um, like, I draw a little bit in my spare time, but I'm really not an artist, um, at all. I don't really have, like, understanding of, like, what makes character design look good or anything, um, so it's really cool when, uh, like Finn and Julian, who are so talented, uh, can just take all these like half formed ideas that I have in my head and turn them into something that looks so amazing. It's just it's like the best feeling in the world. <laughs> From everything that I've seen, they've done just a fantastic job. Yeah, I know that um on the uh official website, uh we have there's a full body shot of um hero if like that's a thing that you want to pull up. I didn't I yes. to send it over. But yeah, it's datordiegame.com. Ah. And I forgot that I don't have a webcam on because I would have just winked into the camera. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the logo. Okay. Yeah. The logo is so beautiful. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. That is a really great logo. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, I love the heart monitor. Like, oh, the little skull for the eye. Oh my god. Finn's so talented. The fonts um, are great too. Yeah. So, uh, yes, that's um, the first image that's on there is uh, the like it's that's half the cast basically because there's ten characters in all. Um, so that's that's half the cast in the first image. Um, and you've already I've shown you uh, mm -hmm. I think one more who's the blue haired boy. Um, and then I haven't talked about mystery girl in the back with the ponytail yet. Yeah. But, um, I will talk about her one day. Uh. Oh. Yeah, and then... Keeping us guessing. <laughs> I have to have like some, you know, <laughs> have some mystery. Well played. Um, but yeah, there's a there's an image of Hero uh down just a little bit, like one one post I think uh... I don't know. But yeah, she is great. I love her. <laughs> so what goes so in? What what are you thinking about when you're making your protagonist? Uh of a game who's supposed to be kind of an uh, an avatar in one way but also kind of our our glimpse into the world they're they're like the portal to the world um so she's i just i mean first and foremost i i don't really care if people like can't fully relate to her i i guess um because you know like i i have a lot of characters in games who i love playing as or playing but i you know don't relate to them at all but you know i still have fun so she's uh, I just want to make her, like, a compelling and interesting character, really. Like, that's kind of the, the first and foremost thing there, is that I want people to like her, even if it doesn't mean that, you know, even if they don't, like, relate to her or whatever, I guess. Um, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, that's why I kind of, <laughs> I wanted to, I didn't want to use the word avatar, because that kind of is a, a loaded term in game design, uh, mm -hmm. but more like a, a, a portal to her own world. Mm -hmm. And so she's the eyes that the player is seeing through in a way. Yeah. So um, people like, I think uh, 
Christine Love was playing uh, Dragon Guard 3 recently and said that, like, you know, the, the best game protagonists say, um, say what you would say in that moment, in that position, like, sort of, like, you know, and so it's why people love the protagonist of Dragon Guard 3 is because she swears all the time and, you know, is, like, swears at the appropriate moments and stuff and she mm-hmm. just, like, doesn't really screw around, basically. Um, so... Hero definitely uh, is a character that I'm trying to make like that. She doesn't, uh, like, unfortunately, you know, she has no tolerance for, uh, like, nonsense, but she's been thrown into this game that is entirely, like, nonsense. Uh, so she's just trying to, like, cope with it. Um, and yeah, she's just, uh, you know, she's kind of reacting like I, I think that most people would in a situation like this that's like you know she's suddenly thrown into a literal life or death um <laughs> yeah. thing <laughs> absolutely yeah um so i guess uh one of my questions is how do you how do you get the people together that you work with what's oh, what's um, your mode of communication so, or something so i do you mean like how i formed my team basically? yeah your your okay. modes of collaboration and what are how do you organize a, a team like that so I got I, I got lucky um, in that I have a lot of extremely talented friends who, you know, happen to like me and the things that I do a lot. Um, like Finn, and, I mentioned earlier that Finn and Julian have been my friends for years. Uh, we, we just met through Tumblr and have been buddies for a while. Um, and, you know, when I wanted to start, like, working on this project, I just asked them, like, hey, do you want to do this thing with me? And they were like, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so that was just great. Mm-hmm. Uh and um my programmer uh person who's like helping me out with all my programming stuff because like i i am really hopeless at it even though renpy is easy i'm really hopeless at programming and i want to just be able to focus Mm -hmm. on writing um so my programmer's name is ryan and he's like my best friend um we we went to school together so that's how i know him um but i know that for people who might not necessarily like have you know those resources already mm-hmm. there i don't want to call my friends resources but like you know what i mean um, yeah 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 <laughs> um yeah you staff can... peons yeah my staff yes my minions um so you can look if you're trying to make visual novels again like the lemisoft forums are great because there's always people there looking for like team members or help or you know whatever um you can try like you know just like talking to people like on twitter and stuff or you know like game jams are a great way to meet people who then you know you might be interested in working with on like later projects and then if you're able to like going out to um like game dev meetups in your area if there are any Mm -hmm. it's like super helpful like that's been really great for me is like i i only recently within the past year started like getting a little bit more involved in the boston like indie games scene and that's just been like they've been so great um like very happening in boston soon um uh, let me think um i know that game loop is in august which is oh, the thing right. that darius kazemi runs um and that's that was great that's actually how that's actually the event that got me into the the scene last year and i met like some of my best friends now um through that event so like um, the boston the scene the scene i know i feel like we're using that word but i don't know what else to call no, it <laughs> you're not wrong yeah <laughs> community the boston, I don't know. The boston area Shindig. We have one in Seattle. There were people in chat hyping up the Dallas scene. <laughs> uh, there's all sorts of different scenes. I know we've had a lot of uh, emails and stuff from uh, Brazilian scenes and Argentinian scenes, and like oh, that's so cool. Yeah. No. I... Yeah. So I mean, there's there's people everywhere, mm-hmm. um, and just you know, and then even like for art stuff, uh, if you have like artist friends who might not necessarily like have ever done game art before, like for visual novels, it really doesn't matter like you know they're not gonna have to do like Mm -hmm. animations or like pixel stuff um you know it's if they can just draw like their own style and it'll look great like it doesn't have to look i mean you've seen the art that i've i've been showing it doesn't have to look like uh, an anime sort of style like a lot (laughs) of people when they think of visual novels or dating sims they think that it has to look um like anime uh but it you know obviously it does not kindness coins really did not look um like an anime game and people love the art style in that i actually um i met jess fink at tcaf um mm-hmm. and she she told me that she really loved my game oh. and she was like that art was amazing and i was like i know <laughs> so uh yeah so it was cool that's so awesome i'm so glad yeah. that 
you're able, uh, that we can all kind of find our communities in different areas. And I think there's something to be said about that physical, the physicality of a, of a in-person meetup space to collaborate yeah. and talk and just hang out, get some drinks or do whatever to mingle. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's very important. Like, I don't know. And if you, if you don't have one like around you, you can, uh, you can start, uh, like making one of your own. Mm -hmm. Got to it starts somewhere and there can be yeah. multiple communities, uh, in certain areas. I know that we definitely have a big fighting game community in Seattle and the Pacific Northwest area. And that's different from the developer scene. Shout out to Seattle PNW, uh, <laughs> FGC. That's yeah. That was for, that was for James. Thanks God. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm okay. keeping an eye on you. <laughs> Um, so we are, it's, I don't know if you noticed, but it's almost been an hour. Like, oh yeah. Wow. All, yeah. That really flew by. Um, for some last thoughts, um, do you have anything else to talk about for a date or die? Um, uh, I don't know. I I'm think excited we, to make it and yeah. I hope that everyone's excited to play it. Um, it's really fun and I'm really trying, uh, to, include a lot of characters who are i mean this seems appropriate given all the the hullabaloo about e3 and ubisoft comments and stuff but i'm trying really hard to include characters who are not usually shown in i mean mainstream games or even like yeah. a lot of indie games um so so uh, then i have the mean question to end things yes. off uh is there a release date or schedule um 2015 Ooh. is all i'm all saying for now <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. That's so exciting. Uh, last call um, for where to where to get in contact with you about Date or Die oh. or where to find updates for Date or Die. Um, you can, well, there's the official Twitter, which is Date or Die, uh, just at Date or Die. Um, there's Date or Die Game .com, uh, which is like a dev blog that you can follow. Uh, I'll be posting like art and stuff there. Um, and, you know, obviously letting people know when it's closer to release. And if you just love me, in general, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Sproutella, and my Tumblr is uh, fategirlgamer.tumblr.com. Well, thank that's, you so much. Me. Oh, we just had a crash. I'm sorry. Oh, uh. I'm not sure what just happened. Uh, it's okay. Uh, oh, boy. All right. Well, I, guess, I was going to say thank you, but I guess no thank you. No, 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 no. no. Still thank you. Uh, one second. Oh boy. I'm not sure why this has started happening today. Yeah, it's day four. Yep, yep. All right. It's nice to have technical issues and not uh, infrastructural issues again. Yes, yes. that <laughs> is true. All right. Uh, I'm going live. I'm going to go off mic. Just a second. Go for it. All right, we should be, be should be back live now. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, well, I we, before we went off, uh, just wanted to say thank you so much, Arden, for being a part of Indie E3 and uh, agreeing to do an interview and all of the things. It means so much to us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's really exciting, like to get to show off all my like you know all this great art. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just want to you know thank you so much for like having me on. We have a, an amazing chat of I believe I last saw uh, six hundred and sixty one people oh that's so frightening <laughs> no pressure that's so cool but so scary yeah i, I think it's oh. very cool and scary too yeah Hi, everyone <laughs> um but yeah so that's date or die uh thank you for hanging out with us and to close things off um we're gonna have another trailer showcase coming up in just a little bit to show off more indie games and then after that uh the schedule is a little bit fluid i'm not sure if the uh, panel that we have set up at 7 is going to be on this channel or on the Indie 4 channel, or if we're going to do more trailers here, I think it's going to be the latter. Um, and then at 8 o'clock, we have Josh Welchel playing. So thank Yay. you guys. Yay. <laughs> uh, again, thank you, Arden. And we will see you guys in probably about half hour so that we can have some time to uh, relax. We've been going full force for the last four hours. And so it's been a, it's been a ride.
Yeah, take a break. <laughs> and send it to God. Working on it. Oh, you got it. <laughs> All right, and there we go. Cool, so we're off? Uh, you're still being listened to. Oh, I have yeah, 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 we're getting there. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was wondering what your cue meant. 